Step three is to find the break-in or breakout points. Breakout or break-in points occur when there is root locus between two real poles or two real zeros respectively. Um, let's do the computing of break-in or breakout points. Uh, you take the loop transfer function, differentiate and set equal to zero and solve the resulting equation. So our previous loop transfer function is s times s plus 0.5 divided by s plus 1 times s squared minus 4s plus 8. You differentiate that, set it equal to zero. You get this really long expression. Be very careful when you do differentiation. And using MATLAB, I simplified it to get this polynomial equation. Solve it with MATLAB. I get S 1.38 plus or minus 1.02 I minus 1.46 and minus 0.31. So fourth order equation, uh, you get four roots. These two roots obviously cannot be, these two locations cannot be uh, break-in points because they are complex. It can be either this or this, the real roots of this equation. So let's see which one, as you saw earlier when you do the real the root locus in the real axis, you see that the root locus between the two zeros is in between 0 and 0 0.5. Therefore, obviously, the uh, location is minus 0.3, somewhere in between minus 1.4 is somewhere here so there is no break in break in here so this is right so you need to make some judgments like so so what's going to happen is root locus is two branches are going to start from here one from here one from here going to travel across and then hit this break in point here and then one branch is going to go to this zero the other branch is going to go to this zero this branch is going to go from here straight to infinity asymptotes if any of the branches go to infinity, like this example here we are working, there's one branch that goes to infinity, then they follow the asymptote. The number of asymptotes equal to n minus m, n is the number of poles in the loop transfer function, m is the number of zeros. Two quantities define asymptotes, the first one is the intercept with the real axis and the second one is the angle with respect to the real axis. The angle of the asymptote with respect to the real axis is given by phi k equal to 2k plus 1 pi divided by n minus m k goes from 0, 1 up to modulus of n minus m minus 1. Intercept the real axis of the asymptote. Now there's going to be a single intercept for all asymptotes is given by sigma is pm minus 1 minus a n minus 1 divided by n minus m. The coefficients bm minus 1 and a n minus 1 are obtained from the characteristic equation. Now the characteristic equation is written in this form. This is the denominator of the characteristic equation this is the numerator of the characteristic equation here is a n minus 1 which is the coefficient of s to the power of n minus 1 and here is b m minus 1 which is the coefficient of s to the power of m minus 1 here is an example so n is 3 m is 2 the number of asymptotes is 1 angle of the asymptote is given by phi k equal to 2k plus 1 pi divided by n minus m now here k can only be 0 there is only one asymptote therefore phi 0 is pi and minus m is 1 so this ends up being pi the intersection of the asymptote to the real axis we write the characteristic equation in this form if we do that we get this expression now a n minus 1 which is a 2 is equal to minus 3 b m minus 1 which is b 0 is 0.5 Sigma is given by Bm minus 1 minus An minus 1 divided by N minus M, which is 3.5. Finally, in this case here, um, we have this root locus, as I said, traveling across like so, and then entering the uh, left half plane. This is your imaginary axis. So at some point, it crosses the imaginary axis. We can also find the position at which it crosses the imaginary axis. Um, for that, you recall, that uh, oh well, let's look at the actual root locus. This I drew with uh, MATLAB, and as you see, the root locus goes like that and goes like that, hits the break in point, one branch goes here, one branch goes here. But in between, the root locus crosses the imaginary axis right here, right about 2.5. Now, one of the properties of uh, the systems is when the root locus crosses the imaginary axis. If we write out the root table for the characteristic equation, an entire row becomes zero. We'll use that property to find this 
location where it crosses the imaginary axis. So we'll write the root table. That's a characteristic equation. We multiply through by the denominator uh, of the loop transfer function to get a characteristic equation in this form. And then we'll multiply these things out. Uh, we start writing the root table. Before you do that, we'll collect all the terms for s cube, s squared, s, and so on and so forth. We write root table s cube. 1 is a coefficient of s cube. 4 plus 0.5k is a coefficient of s. We write the row for s squared. K, k minus 3 is the coefficient of s squared. 8 is a constant term. We write the row for s to the power of 1. This is k minus 3 times 4 plus 0.5k minus 8 times 1 divided by k minus 3. That's this term here. This is obviously a 0. And then write uh, the row for s to the power of 0. That's this term times this term minus 0 times this divided by this, which is 8. For stability, since the first one is first entry here is positive, all everything should be positive right so marginal stability is obtained when this is this term is equal to 0 so we do that for marginal stability set that equal to 0 solve it k equal to minus 9.3 and 4.3 now which of these values is good it is 4.3 because k goes from 0 to infinity so k with the negative value is invalid so we take k equal to 4.3 then you substitute k in the root table <coughs> We get an entire row as 0. What do we do now? We go ahead and form the auxiliary equation from the row above and solve it. 1.3 s squared plus 8. This is the coefficient of s squared. This is the co uh, coefficient of the constant term. So 1.3 s squared plus 8 equal to 0. Solve it. I get s plus or minus 2.4i, which is plus or minus omega ni. That's the frequency of. Uh, uh, oscillation for the undamped system 2.4i and if you recall uh, the root locus crossed the imaginary axis at approximately 2.5 from the figure earlier so we are right <laughs>